Hey guys, what's up? So I'm out in the RV and we are just steady working as fast as we can go to prep for our trip to Alaska. Um, it's been super busy. I've had tons of stuff to do and really haven't had time to film a lot because we've just been so consistent with getting stuff done and getting prepped and ready because we've only got I think about 46 days uh, until my retirement and then we hit the road. So one of the things that I've done, if you follow us on Instagram and Facebook, is we looked at putting a CB radio in, and I did that. But I also went ahead and got my technician and my general license. Um, I tested for tech and then went ahead and went one step further and got my general license for my ham radio, um, which is on right now. And I'm turning the volume down because it's picking up some interference here and there. But I purchased the Anytone AT778UV. And I'll put a link to it down in the description. Uh, it's a dual band 2 meter 70 centimeter or VHF UHF radio. Now I also bought the Tram 1181 dual band antenna. And then I fabricated a custom bracket for the mirror on our Thor Vegas. Um, so I could install that antenna basically right outside of this window over here because the CB antenna is all the way back in the back of the RV up on the roof um, mounted on the ladder. That was the only place I could find an actual ground plane that would work for the CB. Now the tram seems to be working pretty good as far as where it's located right now. Um, I've done a couple of transmissions and tests and it seems to be working. But one of the concerns I had is I have a meter that I can check the standing wave ratio on our, or excuse me, standing wave reading on our CB, but I did not have one for the higher frequencies in the VHF and UHF spectrum. So I got online and got to looking, and I noticed that Amazon has this NISSEI, and I don't know if that's NICE or NICE. Um, but it's a digital SWR meter, um, digital display. It's uh, pretty simple. I mean, you open the box up, and it basically comes with some, I guess that's Chinese um, instructions. There's a little bit of English writing as far as the numbers go, but nothing to write home about. Um, little foam packing, and then we have the actual meter itself in here. Um, and that's all that comes with it. So I'll put a link to it down in the description. But you can see this is the meter. Um, it's just a digital SWR meter. From what I read, it doesn't need calibration. Uh, they put this nice little protective screen on there with the fake numbers. So we'll take that off. And uh, this is what we end up with. Now it didn't come with a USB cable, but because we use Android phones, uh, well, older Android phones, it takes the uh, micro USB C connector. No, there's it B. I don't know. It's an Android connector. Um, looks like that. So we plug that in and uh, turn the power on, turn the light on, and it's got a nice backlight. One of the things that I don't like about this meter, and I've already had it out and messed with it some to get a general feel for it, is if you don't have a specific angle to look at it, um, depending on how it turns, and I don't know how it's going to show up in the camera, but if you're not looking directly at it, you can't see the numbers. Uh, it's almost impossible. But as far as testing the SWRs on the radio, it seems to work. Um, the antenna cable I ran was an RG58AU. And what I done is I took some of the leftover cable because I didn't run it full length. I cut it and uh, put a new PL259 connector on the end of it. So what I ended up doing is I made a short three foot jumper with PL259 connectors on it. And I know there are different colors on both ends. It's just because I had different colors of heat shrink cubing. Um, so what I'm going to do is power the radio down. And I'm going to disconnect the antenna from the back of it and hook the meter in and then I'll let you see what the readings are. So we're back here on the back of the radio and I've got a 90 degree connector in the way we've got this mounted on the dash to try to not take up any space. Um, 
So basically, we just have to disconnect this from the radio. Once it's unhooked, I'll hook it into the meter, just like this. And I've got the meter and the radio off. So now we'll hook up the transmit side. And I just hand tighten my PL259 connectors. I don't tighten them down with a wrench or anything like that. Um, and I solder my connectors. They're not crimp connectors. I actually solder them on. Now you have to bear with me because I am new at ham radio. Um, got a little bit of background in the emergency services, but that's about it. So what we'll do is we'll turn this on. And right now, if you can see the numbers, I have to have it straight on for you to be able to see them. Um, we'll turn the radio on. And we've got the mic here. Right now we're not reading anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to key down. I'll give my call sign just like I'm supposed to do with uh, my ham radio. And you'll be able to see the standing wave ratio up here. And the reflected power, excuse me, this up here is forward power, the standing wave ratio, and then the reflected power. So what we're shooting for is get as close to one to one as we can get. KN4REP. And that gave us 1.63. So that seemed to be pretty accurate. So now what we'll do is that was on the VHF frequencies. We'll go up to UHF and we'll do the exact same thing. KN4REP. And that gave us 1.2 on our meter. So based on those readings, it looks like the antenna is tuned perfectly, just like it is. Um, we're definitely hitting the right SWR range. Uh, the radio's output and good power. Uh, we had about 17 watts on UHF and about 20 on, excuse me, 17 on VHF and 20 something on UHF, um, which at the end of the day, it's not so much about wattage as it is about tuning. Um, you know, you could take a small handheld transceiver radio that puts out one or two watts, and as long as the antenna is tuned, the frequencies are tuned, and the radio is operating like it's supposed to, and the antenna is matched to the radio, you could definitely transmit better. So I think the key thing for me is looking at the SWRs. That tells me that that's going to keep my radio in good working order. It's not going to create internal problems and burn things up. Um, so that kind of makes me happy there. And we'll power the radio down. But, you know, the Anytone radio that I'm running right now, it is a Chinese brand radio. If I had the money to spend on a Yesu or a Kenwood, um, you know, it would be great. But I don't because um, we're trying to save expenses. And this gives us a secondary means of communications when we're out beyond cell phone service. I know we're going to be traveling across Canada, going up through the north, headed out toward Alaska. Um, there's plenty of frequency lists out there. With the Anytone radio, I've got the programming cable, so I can just plug it in, plug it into the laptop. I've already built several code plugs for it that just dumps frequencies in based on the region that we're in, and I think that's going to do us good. Um, but as far as the meter goes, you know, I... I have to say, I can't complain about it um, as far as how it works. I don't like the fact that you can't see the screen. Um, I didn't like the fact that it didn't come with a USB power cable or anything as far as that goes. It is made out of metal. Um, it is set for a frequency range of 125 to 525 megahertz. So as far as setting up a dual band radio, it'll do great. Could I have done it with a swing type meter? Probably, probably could have. Um, that's the same thing I use for the CB, which is mounted up above us here. It just, I think it all comes down to personal preference. Is it easy to use? Oh, it definitely is. I mean, it's basically plug and play. You hook it up, you turn it on, key down on the mic, give your call sign, just like you're supposed to do, so you're not transmitting dead air. Um, and prior to this video, I had both frequencies out here monitoring them, so make sure there wasn't anybody on there that I was going to interfere with doing this video. So let me emphasize that. But... You know, this is the uh, RS50, 140 to 170 and 430 to 470 megahertz. 
Um, and then they do the RS70, which will do 1.6 to 60. So that'll get you in the lower range, and it'll handle up to 200 watts on that range and 120 on the uppers. Um, it seems to be a good little meter. Um, very solid feeling in the hand. Nice connectors. Uh, switches are very positive feel. Um, everything seems to be built pretty good. It is a little bit pricey at eighty dollars, but you know, for a digital single, just mash the button and test it. No calibration, no nothing. It seems to work great. And if these readings are accurate, then that means my antenna outside's tuned to my radio, and I should be transmitting and hitting the peak abilities of the radio anytime I use it. So. That being said, guys, listen, I really appreciate y'all tuning in. Definitely stick with us. Things are going to slow down just a little bit coming up, um, and we'll be able to shoot some more videos. Hopefully, we can do some videos on our trip and, you know, take you along with us and share our experiences. Uh, once everything's finished up in the RV, we'll do a walkthrough. I mean, we've done radio installs, GPS, CBs, dash covers, we upgraded the sink. There's just a ton of stuff that we've done in the RV that we'll have to update you on so you can see it. But I um, appreciate you guys tuning in. And hit that subscribe button for sure. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video. If you have questions or comments, drop them down below. And again, I'll put the link to this stuff down in the uh, description below. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Have a good night.